Hello, in this episode we're going to start looking at how to create some very basic animation blueprints. So what's happened is I've downloaded some assets for some mobs. Uh, you can find them here. And they basically come with uh, some skeletal meshes. Uh, they come with animation sequences, but they didn't have any animation blueprints that I can then attach to my character. So that's what we're going to be looking at creating here. As usual, all the steps to create it are found on this post. And just to show you what it is that we're making, as you can see, it's very simple. We're going to have an animation blueprint which handles our um, idle state and our walk and run, as well as um, our jumping and uh, yeah, basically jumping, uh, jumping loop and then jumping end. So very simple uh, animation blueprint, but we'll just go through this and then you'll be able to see how to then expand that further in your use cases. So. Uh, yeah, let's begin. Okay, we'll begin with a quick demo. So basically my character and my mobs use very similar blueprints. And um, so let's basically log in. Uh, so you'll be able to see that uh, my character is able to run around. You can see the um, motion happening, also able to jump and things like that. And uh, the monsters that have spawned, so these bears, uh, they're also running around and you can see as they move. Uh, they have the appropriate um, animation playing. So that's what we're going to be creating uh, in this uh, video. So uh, let's get into the code. So let's have a look at what kind of assets uh, we'll require here. So the prerequisites essentially. So um, I downloaded these asset packs and as you can see, they come with some skeletal meshes. So for example, I've got this skeletal mesh actor for a bear. And in terms of the animations, so they come with uh, these animation sequences. So um, what I want to then do is create an animation blueprint based on the animations that I have here. And one of the things that I'll do is create a blend space for the motion as well. So basically going from idle to walk to run, and then I'll leverage that inside our animation blueprint. So let's have a look at how that's made. Okay, so the first thing that we'll probably look at is creating a blend space, which will be for your idle walk and run states. And it's actually quite simple. So um, what you want to do is uh, right click, go into animation, blend spaces, and here you'll want to select uh, the skeleton uh, for your actor. So once you've done that, so I'll just call it bear test, uh, just go inside there and then you want to define the parameters for uh, this window, right? So your horizontal and the vertical axes. In our case, we just want the uh, 1D uh, blend space because we just want it based on the motion, but you might want to make it 2D and take into account things like direction as well, so where you're strafing to the sides. So I don't have uh, those animations, so I'm just gonna stick with 1D. And you'll want to just update the parameter name. So for example, the horizontal axes is your speed and update these uh, values accordingly. So if you also have backwards uh, movement here, you might want to set the minimum axis value to something uh, something else like a negative 100, but it really depends on uh, what animations you have as well. So once you've that, done that, you're actually ready to start um, putting your animations into this window, uh, which will allow you to then start um, blending your animations. So one of the cool things is that once you've defined the skeletal that you w wish to use, um, this filters out the appropriate animation. So for example, if I type idle, you can see that there's an idle um, animation sequence that I can use. And I'm able to then uh, set the parameters here. So I just want it to be uh, on the left hand side. So when my speed is zero, I want it to be playing this idle state, right? So that's what you can see happening uh, here right now. Uh, then I want to find my walk animation. So I find that, I put that in, and you can see that um, the bear will be walking when the speed parameter, uh, let's just put that to something like 15 or something, right? And then you also have this preview val value. So uh, you, as you drag it along, you can see uh, how the blend space is taking effect. So let's just uh, put that to 50. Um, and we just do the same for run as well, right? So we have idle walk and run so we'll just find the last one and just drag that in and uh, let's put that to something like i don't know let's say 45 um units so basically as you approach uh this 45 uh, you can see that it's blended into this uh, running animation, right? So, and that's how like blend space works essentially, right? So depending on the input parameters, it will start blending the animations that you have so that when your speed is 
exactly uh, 45 or higher, it will simply play the running animation. When your speed is zero, it will just play the idle animation. Anything in between, it tries to blend those animations together. So um, that's essentially our blend space complete. So you can see it's a really simple process to create uh, a simple blend space. It can obviously get a lot more complicated once you add uh, another dimension and perhaps you just need to tweak those parameters. But for now, this is kind of um, enough and, and this will um, be enough for you to test uh, because you might want to start tweaking these values uh, based on uh, you know when you add your actors to the game and you can see there's um, some interesting behavior. So you might want to still modify these further. Okay, and with that done, we're ready to start creating the animation blueprint. So again, right click animation, and then there's your animation blueprint. So again, just select the skeleton that you wish to use for this blueprint and uh, just hit OK. So I'll just go into this one since it's ready. And the first thing that we'll look at is inside the event graph. So this function should already exist. And the purpose of the event graph really is to populate the required variables and parameters for for you to use inside the animation uh, graph, right? So in, in the anim graph. So um, we'll need two parameters. So one of them we explored earlier, which is for the speed. Uh, and the second one is whether the pawn is in air. So uh, in, in this uh, function, this is basically where you need to try and define those variables. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, and the way to achieve that is to basically get the pawn owner and extract the parameters from the pawn. So there's uh, multiple ways of achieving that. So sometimes you'll be able to get the variables directly from the pawn owner. Uh, and occasionally uh, you'll want to get some more uh, intricate values from uh, your blueprint. So for example, if uh, your um, your actor is doing some more complicated actions based on additional parameters, you may wish to cast it to uh, the appropriate blueprint. So for example, I can cast it to this mob undead bear, which is uh, this one over here, right? So I'm able to then access the functions and the parameters inside uh, this blueprint as well. So this is kind of optional. So you can see inside my um, human um, blueprint. You can see I don't do that. I just grab myself the pawn owner and then I get the movement component and I'm able to extract whether that um, pawn is falling and I'm also able to extract the velocity as well. So uh, this is a more trivial way of extracting those parameters. So that's what you can do. Uh, but again, you're able to do the casting here in case there's some parameters that you need to access from uh, your actual uh, blueprint class. Um, so when you've populated the speed and whether the uh, pawn is in air, we're able to then go into the anim graph and populate the state machine here. So once you get into here, all you'll see is the output pose and what you'll want to do is create a new state machine. So uh, that's how you create one and just give a, um, a good name, right? So I just called mine default here. So once you go inside here, uh, that's where you're going to start populating the states and the transitions, right? So in order to create a state, uh, just right click, type a state, so idle and then warp to, uh, right? So that's how you're going to be creating the states by themselves and they don't have anything associated to them. So uh, we'll be populating them, but basically just create a couple of states. And what we'll do is then we'll start linking uh, the states together via these transitions. So this is basically what you'll want it to look like. And um, what we'll start doing is populating the, um, the actual functionality inside of these. Uh, your entry will get connected to the idle run. So this just means that uh, when you invoke this blueprint, it will automatically go into this idle run state and uh, it will just execute wh whatever's required here. And then you'll essentially go from state to state depending on these transitions. So yeah, let's start looking into the idle run then. So let's go inside the idle run. And what we have here is we're basically playing that blend space that we've created earlier. So uh, blend space, bear, idle run, and we want the, um, the player, right? So, and all we need to do here is configure the speed variable that we've configured earlier uh, in the event graph. So this is where we grab our pawn and we're able to extract the speed parameter 
and we put it inside this variable and then simply reference that variable into the blend space right and um, simply connect that output pose to the output animation and it will do the rest for you so it's quite good in that respect so that's our idle walk and run state configured now and what we want to do is then connect it to our jump start jump loop and jump end so basically when you connect them like this uh, you'll create these transitions and if you double click it all you need to do is just configure uh, what is the condition that needs to be in order to transition to that next state in our case it's uh, whether the pawn is in air so again we're able to extract that via the uh, event graph and from the movement component we have this is falling uh, function and then we simply connect that to the is falling variable and then link that to the uh, transition right so now uh, we simply tran uh, transition out of the idle walk or run state into the jump start when is falling is true. Let's see what happens inside jump start. So this one's quite simple because all we're going to do, uh, and that's actually the, uh, the same for the rest of them, is we're going to play the animation sequence itself. So this is one of the more trivial things to do. So uh, in our case, we have bear jump start. And what we want to do is click this play bear jump start, right? And then simply connect that to the output pose and it again will handle the rest for you. So once you start the animation, you'll then want to go into the jump loop. So how do we determine that? Um, here we're able to basically get the asset. So bear jump start. Uh, we, we've got this asset um, functions available. So here, for example, we've got the time remaining or the time remaining ratio. So that's what I'm using here. And basically when it's about to finish, so that's just connected to here, when uh, the animation sequence is about to finish, uh, this Boolean becomes true. And it simply means that you can transition out of the jump start animation into the jump loop. So then you stay in here. And then again, we're going to be playing the jump loop animation. So play uh, bear jump loop. And um, it will keep playing that until this transition is uh, met. And here, this is basically, we're just tracking whether the mob is still in air. So if it's no longer in air, that's when you want to transition out of the jump loop and go into the jump end. So what happens here, we play the jump end animation sequence. So again, jump end. And you can see it's doing all of these filtering for you. This is because it's uh, filtered based on the skeleton. So these are the uh, animations that I have for this particular skeleton called with jump end. So now you can simply connect this out animation pose into the result and uh, we've configured our jump end. And let's have a look at the transition here. Very similar, we're gonna get the jump end animation asset. So you can also type that. And uh, we want again the ratio. So when it's almost finished, you can, you can then um, enter this transition which just means that you come out of jump end back into the idle run state. So that's our very simple um, animation blueprint. And uh, yeah, we can now start applying it to our um, character blueprint or the pawn um, blueprint. One thing to bear in mind as well is that these transitions, uh, this is a pretty trivial implementation of it. So basically, um, there can be bugs here because you're trying to play the animation and if for example the monster only jumps for like just a, a brief moment uh, it will still continue playing this uh, it, it's a relatively short animation but still it will continue playing this even if uh, the monster's back on the ground so you can have these jittery effects so there are ways to um, sort of fix that but at the moment we're just going with this trivial approach and in most cases it will work fine but it is worth noting so you might want to be changing some of these in the future as well so now once you've um, finished building this animation uh, blueprint you'll just want to assign it to uh, your actual uh, actor class so in my case uh, these actually stem from the character blueprint uh, but it doesn't have to be like that. Uh, in fact, it's um, usually better to connect it to like an actor or a pawn. Uh, I had some issues with that for other reasons, but uh, it will work with either one. And uh, basically, once you've selected the mesh, you can configure the um, skeletal mesh that you're using. So in my case, the skeletal mesh undead bear. And then I then want to uh, add this animation class to here. So uh, you basically just find your animation blueprint for uh, the bear in my case, right? So once you've then compiled it, it should just work. And that's it, we're able to start testing it. 
So one thing I mentioned before is um, playing around with the blend spaces. So basically trying to find the correct values for uh, your walk and run animation. And some of it will be through trial and error. I'll just demonstrate it using this uh, human um, animation blend space uh, because it's just easier to test with. So uh, I'll just log into this character. So you can see by default, uh, the running animation uh, looks pretty good. It's basically aligned to my speed. So as I'm moving it, um, you can see the feet sort of align well with the ground. So what happens if I just have sort of bad values inserted here? So uh, let's say I put something very high on this axis and my run animation, so I have to have a speed of 1700 in order to run, so that's very high, uh, and it's not going to be the case. So if I then uh, go into the game again, let's see what happens. You can see my character is actually moving at the same sort of pace, uh, but it's not actually playing the running animation, it's playing the walking animation, because um, that's kind of what, what it's uh, trying to do. So in, in here, my speed is roughly there, so it's much closer to the walk animation. So it's mainly just simply walking, right? So uh, this is where you'll want to just play around with these values in order to um, basically align it. So I think it was about, I don't know, 175 or something. So uh, once that's fixed, uh, you're able to then uh, basically have uh, good looking animations again. So that's how you can play around with blend spaces and just basically through trial and, and error uh, fix it. But sometimes the assets will actually tell you what the uh, units should be. So just check in the documentation as well. Uh, that's it for this one. And thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.